to the movie Trivia Showdown. I am Christian Harloff, joined by Baby Carrots, Mark Ellis, and my God, Mark, what a match we have today. The outlaw, John Roca, the two-time single champion, the reigning team's champion, goes up against the former Movie Trivia Schmodown champion, the youngest champion in history, primetime Paul Oyama. This is such a fun matchup for me because you look at John Roca, the guy who's on Mount Rushmore of the Movie Trivia Schmodown, yeah. and now Paul Oyama is going to use his young strength to climb up that mountain and pick the nose of the legend John Roca. Well, yeah, because uh, look, and this is, but this is something that Oyama really wants to do, and the question is, how will Oyama fight? How will he do? We know that he was... Uh, he was on the ropes after what happened with him. With uh, so rough thing was spectacular. Was spectacular. He, but he bounced classics. back in his teams, though. He bounced back in that team. He team's certainly thing. did. He looked good. He looked good. Looked fresh. So he even got a classics question right. He looked really good in that match with Lon Harris, and I think that Winston Marshall has been working with him a lot, and it looks like even a lot of the players are starting to re respect him a lot more uh, because his attitude has changed. He's shown even he's he's talked about it like how much respect he has now for the game. It's changed. He's, there's no more of these sunglasses. No more of the jacket. No, he has uh, maybe grown, matured as a person a little bit yeah. in the offseason. But if you give Winston Marshall some of the credit for Paulo Oyama's tutelage, which I agree with, you got to give some credit to Bobby Gucci. As much as I hate saying it, Finstock controlling the faction that Roca is representing here today. Finstock wins a lot, Christian. He does. And there's a, a more, more yes and a little no. Uh, m more of the yes because he's gotten Roca. Him and Roca have a very uh, storied past here. They they were rivals back during the Patriots. Days. I think everyone was a rival of Finstock at, at one, one point. point, but they yeah. were rivals. Remember, he used to call him the Dope Roca uh, at a long time. But they jo <laughs> they joined up. But they joined up together. They joined up together and they won the team's titles together. Yep. He took the titles with him. He did really good in the singles run under Gucci's uh, tutelage, right? But you got to talk about the draft. No, we're, we're going to bring it about, up. You have to. Um, this number? You have to because that was the only time in since these guys have joined together that there were arguments. Roca, even though he was protected, had he had an issue that he was chosen fourth, that there was no discussion. And Dagnino said, yeah, I goofed. I'm sorry, I goofed. Uh, I should have I should have just drafted you all at the same time. But it seems like they've gotten past it. Yeah, look, I mean, that's, that's what you want with a manager-competitor uh, relationship with a player-coach relationship. That was an issue for an evening, but it got squashed as all issues should get squashed at the Saddle Ranch on the Mechanical Bull on Sunset Boulevard. All right, that's right. Ride now, the bull, baby. Now, a little peek behind the curtain here, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow will be the free-for-all. Tomorrow, that's right, March 21st. Oh, tonight will, I'm doing stand-up. Good for you. still get tickets. Good. March 21st will be the free-for-all. Everybody will be there. You hopefully will be there and have your tickets get there but we shot this match a little bit before that and i'll tell you days. and why do i tell you that because at this moment ben bateman will be walking out with the championship by the time that this airs he might not be the champion we'll see so it might fix continuity and i'll tell you what we filmed this in 2017 if he is still the champion only the people in the audience will see this clip so <laughs> it doesn't matter but if not you got to see it you're getting and a little Seinfeld in you. I it mean, come matter. on. If Merle's the champion, you'll see it. No, but man. if not, you'll never see it. Kramer. Won't happen. <laughs> so Elaine. that's it. But with that, these guys are going to talk about exactly what's happening. Here we go. I got to take a, take a little time off to sort of regather myself and sort of, you know, rediscover the love for the league that I think made me get to where I was in the first place. I remember the last time somebody in our faction played uh, Paul Oyama. Didn't go too well for him. And your the Finstock Exchange, the horsemen. We are reborn again. Belts, points, titles, championships, victories. That's what we're all about. My journey is complete for this stage. Paul Oyama, I'm training harder than ever. You should be afraid. afraid, afraid. Mr. Oyama, we're here to get back my boy's belt. The thing is with Prime Time, he how is he gonna come back from that devastating loss against Ben Bateman at the spectacular? It's a tough Christmas present to unwrap. Yeah, you know, me and Roka both got a little lost in the woods there, but it's I think we've rekindled both of our fires, and I think today it's just about whose fire burns brightest. And I'm ready with the fire. I respect what you did in the league. You won the singles title. You did what I did. 
you beat Dan Merle for the belt. You became a champion. I'm hearing from a lot of people that your attitude has changed. Well, that pleases the outlaw. That makes the outlaw happy. Because I love this game. And anyone who disrespects this game or the players in this game, they'll get the full fury of me. I saw the documentary. You taught us how to do this. And now it's time for my boy to become a legend, all right? Look, man, this is a match about respect. But with all due respect, that belt's coming back here. And if I got to beat him to do it, that's what's going to happen. Drip, drip. You know, Oyama in Japanese means little mountain. Well, Roca in Spanish means bigger mountain. So, son, you're coming up against a big mountain. But now you're in the ring with me. And no matter what you prepped for, no matter what you studied, no matter what you, your manager told you to do, drip, drip, we're going to dry all that up. Better men than you have tried to rattle the outlaw and have failed. So stay your course. I create space for you to be a different person, changed, and learned your lessons. But you got one more lesson to learn, and I'm going to show you that in the ring, son. Get ready. All right, so look, and that's a new Oyama. He's, he's paying respect to Roka. This seems relaxed. He does. You know? That's, but that's, Not his pent-up aggression. No. It's all gone. It's in the past. I think as a sophomore in the league, he knows. And I think that it bothered him a little bit when, you know, the, the fans and the audience, uh, excuse me, and the competitors were saying, ah, this guy doesn't show any respect. He doesn't care because I think that's all he's showing right now. And I think that he showed it a lot in his team's match. Even Roka said it. Roka gave him some props, too. But this is a big match. If Oyama wins, he possibly could get a shot at the title. And Roka's got a match or two, and he might get himself another shot at that belt to get a third championship. So there's a lot at stake. As we go to the tail of the tape, John Roka, you know him, you love him. He's a legend. He's great at Westerns, biopics, and stalking the backstage with his trademark Beats headphones. <laughs> That's absolutely right. He Paul Oyama, he sponsor. is very good at classics. Yes, I said classics. He's also good at new releases and frequent flyer miles racking them up. He's going to be meeting Sam Elliott very soon. Very good. All right. Well, with that wonderful breakdown, are you ready? Thank, I feel good about it. Good yeah, for man. you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Movie Trivia Schmodown! <laughs> Throaty crowd here today. That's right. This is a tough ticket. Three rounds in the singles division. Introducing first, representing the Finstock Exchange with a record of 14 wins, nine defeats, and three knockouts. He is the former two-time movie trivia showdown champion of the world and the reigning team champion, John the Outlaw Ruka. That's the Barbarian. That's not the Outlaw. That's the Barbarian. Uh, yeah, Finstock, uh, apparently on his way to class. Mark Riley, there's the champ. There's Dan Merle, and there's John Roca emerging with an outlaw shirt. The great documentary put together by Eric Rodriguez, nerd chronic himself. That documentary was amazing. All fantastic. They're standing round four, round four as a disparaging remark. They want to get in his head. I don't think it's going to work. It wouldn't have worked for Tom Brady. They're standing round six. Is <laughs> making me mad? It's not the right thing to do. Oh, he's, he's starting to talk off microphone already, Christian. <laughs> That's what he does. That's what he does. Yelling at people. And his opponent, representing Team Swag, led to the ring by his manager, Winston Marshall with a record of six wins, one defeat, and one knockout. He is the former movie trivia showdown champion of the world, prime time, Paul Oyama! Happiest intro I've ever seen. That would perk 
up anybody's yeah, hands. Some rope. Having those three guys yeah. snap with you like they're newsies. I'm telling you, though, look, look, at, look at the difference in Oyama. He comes out, he's smiling, he's that shaking urban? hands. That's right, oh, that's yeah. Chandra can dance. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. How tough was it for John Roca to shake Winston's hand when he's clearly wearing an ugly Des Bryant shirt? Yeah. Oh my good. Oh no. Oh boy, Christian, I. Oh no, it's a, it's a Michael Irvin. Yeah. All right. Think that'll make the cut? And Michael Irvin. I don't know. That's a yeah. bad The guy who pushed off Daryl Green. Uh, Eric, can we superimpose a Giants jersey on him, please? Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. right. No, but I, res I respect the Seven Samurai shirt. That's, that's very right. Nice. It's your Jimbo. You might. Oh! Like there it is. There it is. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. With that, round number one is about to begin. Mark, they've sat down. Yeah, they have the sat down, Christian. So now it's time to read the rules. Everybody's favorite part of the schmodown. No. <laughs> Continuing on, the field of competitors will hear eight questions from eight different corners of the movie trivia schmodown at Galaxy. Each question is worth one point. No penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. As soon as we ask the question, you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer. Once we ask you by name to reveal your answer, please show what you write on the whiteboard as legibly as possible to the camera at the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone. Each competitor has three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want to buy yourself some time, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the three-round match. All right, we ask the former champion, Polo Yama, are you ready? Set your clocks, boys. Let's do this. And we ask the former two-time champion, Roka, are you ready? I've had clocks for many centuries. They've been set ready to go for quite some time. Let's do this. <laughs> then right. let's get ready to Schmodown! All right, John Roca, an outlaw Whoa. western vampire. Roca's got a new Whoa. energy in him, though, too, though, which is exciting to watch. Here we go, action adventure. Denzel Washington reprised the role of Robert McCall in which 2018 action sequel? Uh, you go to a lot of these fancy parties and take selfies with celebrities. You ever I do, do one with Denzel Washington? No, you know, but Ethan Irwin actually watched the Oscars with him. Well, he's Ethan Irwin. Well, not the Oscars. That's false. Five. You're telling lies on this show? Four. It was the presidential election. Three. <laughs> That's a very <laughs> two. Ceremony. Very different. One. <laughs> pens down, please. And Oyama. The equalizer, two. Yes. And equalizer, John. two. Yes. There, there it is. Uh, okay. There it is. Can Tie I get game. another pen? Can I get another, another pen? pen? This another pen, pen, pen for like... Roka, please. There you oh, go. I don't really trust Chandra. Chandra, well done. Good hustle. All right, all right. That's cool. All right. Question two. Question two comes in the world of the 80s movies. Paul Yama, not yet born, now. John Roca starting his second family. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say semester. And his team was winning Super Bowls. That's right. Your question for a point. What MCU actor plays Brand, Mikey's older brother, in The Goonies? Uh, you, you on board with this, um, this, this rebooting or remaking of uh, The Goonies? Yeah, with a TV show or whatever. Yeah, it's about, I, have kids I don't know. I, I don't know. Five. So, you don't four, sound like you. You ten, sound like you know. Three. I probably, and it's yeah. not a good answer. No, it's no. Two, one. Repeat the question. Oh, Ooh. can do okay. that. What MCU actor plays Brand, Mikey's older brother, in The Goonies? I never saw this movie until I was in college. Get out of here. Yeah. Do you like it when you saw it? It was funny at the end when they, when they did the, the one family brings them a pizza. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I got a kick out of that. Five. Oh, that was good four, stuff. Four, three. Two, one. We start with John Roca. Yeah, uh, Josh Brolin. Yes, and Oyama. I almost missed it. Josh Brolin. Oh, there yeah. it is. Okay. Two, two. All right, but, but Oyama did use one. He's purple, man. One I don't recognize JT. him. It's one a JT rule. All right, all right, all right. So our next question here. Question three. Dramas. Who plays real life individual Aaron Ralston in the 2010 film 127 Hours? We saw that movie together. I know. I remember. Good flick. Yeah, I agree. Top 10 of the year, probably? Yeah, I'd say probably so. Is that the year Inception came out? Stop talking. Five, four. What are you doing later? Three. Broke the rule. You want to get Two. a bite? Yes. One. <laughs> Pens down, please. And we start with Oyama. James Franco. Yes. Roka. James Franco. Tie game. <laughs> question four. All right. Next question is in the world of famous actors and actresses. And your question, which actor appeared in the films Rudy? Swingers, Iron Man, and Chef. Pretty uh, eclectic group of films there. Do you have a favorite? Uh, next time I say just put the whole IMDb list on there. Okay, 
honey, there's maybe more <laughs> than one actor <laughs> appeared in three of those movies. I just wanted to see if I could and get then, you to call me honey. Five, four. We'll talk about this at home. Three, <laughs> two, one. Pens down. John. John Favreau. Yes. And uh, Oyama? Favs. There we go. John Favreau. Favreau. Okay. Next one. <laughs> Fantasy sci-fi. Which 1968 sci-fi film starred Charlton Heston and was directed by Franklin J. Schaffner? That's your boy. Franklin J. Schaffner. Yeah. Hey, we used to hang out. Frankie Schaffs. Yeah. Frankie Schaffs. That's right. <laughs> hey, Frankie Schaffs. You want to go get a slice? <laughs> We're all going to Frankie Schaffs' place later. That's right. Five. Four. Why are we doing these characters? Three. I don't know. <laughs> Two. We should stop talking. One. Pens down, please. Oyama. Planet of the Apes. Yes. Roka. <sighs> Planet of the Apes. That's correct. Oh, old Feed school Roka. Roka. A little fakey. Old, old school Roka. It's a 2016. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, your next category is in the world of comedies. <laughs> One day. One day they're not going to do it. One day they're going to turn on you when you go heel. <laughs> Someday they're not going to laugh. No. That's the day I take off the headset, walk out walk of the studio. Off. It's true. What's the profession of Jim Carrey's character in 1997's Liar, Liar? I love that, Jim Carrey. Yeah. Oh, boy. All-timer. He's a good one. Top five? Give me an actor's. Five, four, three. Top five doctors, two, Christian. Just one. Pens down, please. And John Rook. Lawyer. Yes. Oyama. Lawyer. Tie game. Woo! OK. Next question, horror slash thriller. Oh. This movie was popularized by which 1999 horror film about three film students who vanished after traveling into Maryland Forest to film a documentary? Wait, we need the name of the movie. You didn't. <laughs> the found, what I, what I, I didn't say it. It, was, it was clunky. It's Don't. a clunky read. Yeah. Hey, look, we got to be big enough to take criticism. I know. <laughs> no, no, honey, delete. Yeah. Five, four. Telling your wife you wrote that. Three, two, one, and we start with uh, Paul Yama. The Blair Witch Project. Yes, and Roka. The Blair Witch Project. Yes, right. it was. So, both of the competitors are tied at seven, and they are within one of a perfect round here. No surprise given the talent yep. on display. So here we go. Last question. World of animated movies. Uh. Movies drawn by hand or on a computer. Uh. The question is, this actor played the evil Judge Doom in 1988's Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Uh, did you know Blair Witch Project, based on a true story? False. That's real. False. That's real footage you're watching. No. You're watching no. a guy stand in the corner. Four Five, reels. Four. Three. I was there, man. Believe it. Two. I was filming. One. Pens down. And we start with Roka. Uh, Christopher Lloyd. Perfect round. And Oyama. Messed it up. Nope. Oh, oh so Roka. Hey. Roka hits. Oyama misses. Look at that. And so Roka and only Roka will get the bonus. Roka, you do not have to write it down. You just have to answer it. 15 seconds for the question. Here you go. Who directed? Category. The, oh, there's, there's, there's no category. There's no category. No category. Bonus, my friend. Okay. Uh, here we go. Sorry to throw you off. It's all right. Who directed the 2008 crime caper, Rock and Roller? Learning from Ben. Five. Four, three, two. Guy Ritchie. Yes, for one point. Yeah. Roka right. has perfect round and the bonus. John Roka up by two over Oyama. A little bit of a stumble there by Oyama, but still a really good first round as we find ourselves 9-7 going into round number two. It is 9-7 and round number two. Christian, that is known as the wheel round. In round number two, a wheel emerges thanks to our good friend Alex Marizonia. Check out Spotify. Type in Marizonia. Opponents and spinner's choice are on the wheel. You also have 10 wedges from different worlds of movie trivia know-how. Once the category is selected, by each competitor. You're gonna hear four questions in that world. Each question's worth two points. No penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. When we give you your options, please allow us to finish all the options before wagering a guess. All right. John Roca, you're up nine to seven. Congratulations. You may spin first or defer to your opponent, Paul Oyama, in round number two. What would you rather do? Uh, I will defer to Paul. All right, All so right here Paul comes Paul Oyama. Oyama. So Paul Stepping Oyama. up. It's a big match for Paul here, too. And I think this is not, not only because he's playing against John Roca, but 
because the fact that you know he he wants to show that his run last year of six and one sure was, I mean he's, he's already scored more points than he did in the championship match against against uh, is that true me, yeah is that true it's true he had a rough one but this is but he's come back and he looked good in the teams match and he looks good so far here in That's round right. number one. Oh, we should note uh, Jim Henson is a sponsored slice how about a hand for the movie trip his phone out pages out there if Jim Henson is taken we'll say the name of that patron what is that now what all is right that? SNL movies. SNL Saturday movies. Night Live movies. Saturday Night Live movies. Movies starring SNL alums, maybe based on an SNL sketch. He's going to go gonna again. spin it again. All right, so Yama's going to spin away from SNL movies. All right. And now he's going to he's gonna have to take whatever he gets here. But That's he's right. Still, if he gets Jim Henson, we're saying the name of this person. Yeah, but it isn't interesting, though, how each competitor has their own style, right? Like he knows that, you know, whatever it is, he's got to take, but he still wants to be there to, to watch it. You know what I mean? Like, he knows that he's got to take it. Some players go and they sit back Some down Some of them spin desk. it, and they go right yeah. back. And yeah. I always, I'm like, hey, you know what? You might spin. Spinner's choice. Christian, this could be SNL movies all over. Why a adaptation? Yes, it is. Why a adaptation? They're very excited about that. I guess maybe they put that on the wheel. Maybe. That's right. I still got to answer the questions, man. That's yeah. right. All right, so we're going to have uh, four questions in the YA category here. So These you are go young off. adult adaptations. Uh, I will ask the questions yes, to, to the young adult, Paul Oyama. Uh, Paul, your first question of four for two points. What Oscar-nominated actress played the lead in the 2013 film The Host? So Ronan. Nailed it. Two yeah. points. Very tough name to pronounce. Yes. Searsha, we'll take it. Yes. Two points. Uh, your next question, second of four. In the first Maze Runner film, the youths are forced to live in a large area that they call the what? The Glade. It's a oh. cleaner as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's an air freshener, no I believe. All right. All right. So, Paul, off to a hot start in YA adaptations. He's perfect through two questions. Your penultimate question in this category. The human race is almost extinct as a series of alien attacks cause natural disasters in which 2016 film? The fifth wave. It is Impressive. the fifth wave. Impressive. Impressive by Oyama there. Showed he wanted this and showed why, because he's doing pretty good. This is his last one, Mark. That's right. Paul, your last question. In the world of young adult adaptations, the 2013 film Beautiful Creatures takes place in what southern United States? Five, four. Louisiana. That is incorrect for a two-point steal, John Roca. We cannot offer multiple choice. Five, four, three. Uh, South Carolina. Heads, Carolina. Tails, California. It is South Carolina. What? Two points. Two points. Wow. John Roca hits the steal. 13-11. What a play. Massive steal by Roca. And here comes Winston Massive Marshall steal. right away. Massive steal by John Roca as he hits the wheel. That is the Roca of old. I feel like 2016 Roca just and jumped out of his body. As quick as he was on that answer, Winston Marshall speeding over yeah. to Paul Young. Paul Young not rattled, but Winston Marshall just going to check on his guy. Yeah. I like that kind of managing. You can't look. You can't uh, fault Oyama for that. That was a great round that he had, and he took a shot, and it just. And I think Roka legit guessed on That's there. That's right. And, and Finstock, fresh from a paintball course, uh, you can swing by the pegs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but just not too fast. Just if you swing it too hard, it'll spin for six months. So just, so just uh, spin. Yeah. There you go. Here comes Roka. Roka spin. spinning it. And so, yeah, so as, as we said, look, Oyama hit his strength, or hit a strength in, in YA, and he did really, really well. Louisiana, South Carolina. No, man, it's it, was, a tough call. it was a great guess, and he, the kid played great, but Roka just had one of those Roka steals in that moment. And this so. is one of those classic Roka moments. If he spins something that he knows, look, Christian, Westerns is on the wheel. It All is. Right? Ben and Matt, my close personal friends, are on the wheel. <laughs> well, here it is. It's coming around. We still got some time to kill if you want. <laughs> Oh, oh wow. yeah, spin again. You Just get two, go you get two more. Two more spins. Two more spins. 
All right, so there it goes, Christian. You so know I just he's realized, looking for Westerns. I just realized it's probably conflict of interest to have our cameraman on the uh, uh, who's on the same <laughs> faction as... Oh, did you hear some... I heard him screaming, yes, yes, as opponent's choice were coming, and the, the camera almost fell off the, the stand. Would that be uh, noted director Robert Butler III? It absolutely was. Do you know he has, he has a show called The Meaning of Podcast? Did you know? I believe you can uh, subscribe to... Yeah. I almost said subscribe to In the Cut, but that's a Mark Ruffalo, Meg Ryan that's film. Right. Well, here it comes. The here first it cut comes. is the name of the... Is it going to be Matt and Ben after all? Ooh. Almost Matt Westerns. Matt and Ben. Does he, so yeah, well, that's the question, again. though. Does he stick with Matt and Ben, or does he tempt fate with the wheel once again? Matt and Ben's a pretty fresh category. He's gotten dangerously close to Spinner's Choice, but is he aiming for Westerns? Does he go for Matt and Ben? This is an interesting call by the outlaw. Could either sink him or help him right. out. Luckily, right now. he has a guy that works at a hunting store there to consult <laughs> with him. <laughs> I got to take... John, you got to choose in five seconds here. You're going to be forced with Matt and Ben. Five, four, taking it. Three, taking it. All right. It. All right. He's going to take Matt and Ben, maybe not wanting to tempt the wheel anymore. So Matt and Ben is the category. All right. These are any actors named Matt Anyone, and yeah. any actors named Ben. <laughs> All right. All right. Here we go. Question For, one. Am I asking these? No, you already asked them. Sorry, buddy. Um, Thought I'd get you. Yeah. Ben Affleck appeared in two films from director Michael Bay, Armageddon. What was the other one? Five, four, three, two. Will you repeat the question, please? Yep, first one. Ben Affleck appeared in two films from director Michael Bay, Armageddon, and what was the other one? Leave him drawing a blank. Five. Multiple choice. A. Reindeer Games. B. The Island. C. Pearl Harbor. D. Paycheck. Pearl Harbor. Correct. For one point. I hate right. that move. Like That's why. For Roca. He needed to check the multiple yeah. choice. We'll see if that point comes back to haunt him. Home, Here's the Pearl second Harbor. one. Here's the second one. What famous actor directed Matt Damon in 2017's Suburbicon? George Clooney. Two points. Yeah. Another right. one of my good friends. That's right. All right. Question three. Question three. In Ben Affleck's Live by Night, <laughs> who plays a young sex worker named Loretta Figgis? Oh. Five. Four. Three. I, you know, I got to go multiple choice. A. Chloe Grace Moretz. B, Anya Taylor-Joy, C, Zendaya, D, Ella Fanning. Ella Fanning, excuse me. B? It's incorrect. <laughs> Paul, the choices are A, Chloe Grace Moretz, B, Anya Taylor-Joy, C, Zendaya, D, Ella Fanning. Zendaya? Sorry, it's Ella Fanning. Ella Fanning. Elle Fanning. Wow. All right. All right. So <laughs> that, is, by night. that is question number two. That was three? Yes, it was. All right, this is question four. Here is question number four. Matt Damon has been nominated for the Best Actor Oscar twice for Goodwill Hunting and which 2010 film? Which 2010s film, excuse me? Came out somewhere in the decade. Correct. Of the aughts, right? Yes. Know what we call them? 2010s. Oh, God, I should have spun away Five. from this Four. Ah, you got to take chances in life. Uh, the Martian. Correct for two oh. points. Oh, wow. Roca hits it. Teaching the kids a lesson with that guess. Roca hits it. So Roca is, is having that game. This is a John Roca that we haven't seen in a long time, doing those things, making those chances and those choices, and we're, he finds himself up three points over the former champion as we get into round number three. It's like we're seeing the old John Roca come back to life, yep. and we're seeing a new Paulo Yama. How is this new Paulo Yama going to handle the pressure of round number three? Right. We're about to find out in round number three, the round that will determine the match, lest we go into sudden death overtime. Each competitor is going to give us a series of numbers. These numbers can range from one to 20. Each number corresponds to a different corner of movie, trivia, schmodown, know-how. Gonna need three numbers from each competitor. First question is worth two points. Next one's worth three points. Last one, should we make it that far, is worth five big points. John Roca? 
Yes. You're sitting in an unfamiliar position as the, the lower-ranked competitor. Uh, but you are defeating Paul currently by a score of 16 to 13. So you give us your numbers first. What feels lucky, sir? Seven. Ten. And what's the last number that we can pick? 20. Yeah, 20. Sure. Seven, 10, and 20 right. for Roka. Thought he was asking me for advice there. <laughs> and Oyama. Four, 19, and six. Four, 19, and six for Oyama. All right, good selection. Oyama will be starting here. He'll have to answer both his two and his three. Uh, here is the first question for Oyama. Comes category number four. Paul, you chose famous actors and actresses. Sandra Bullock plays the character of Gracie Hart in which film? Miss Congeniality. Yes, sir. Two points. Also would have accepted Miss Congeniality, Armed and Dangerous. Would have chosen either one. All right. So now, in order to bounce back to Roca, he needs to hit his three-pointer. Three-pointer comes in the world of comedy. <laughs> no, that's only for you. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. In 2005's Hitch, Hitch takes Sarah on a private tour of what New York location for their first date? The Smithsonian. Incorrect. Looking for Ellis Island. Right here. Mr. Mark Ellis Island. This guy. So, I own it. So we find ourselves in this position. If Oyama hits his five-pointer, it bounces back to John, and John has to answer some questions. However, if Paul misses, John will win via TKO. Here we go, Paul. What's that category, Christian? Judd Apatow Ooh. is your question. Judd Apatow. Here we go. Who plays Clark, Leslie Mann's husband, in Funny People? Five. Four. Three, two. Repeat the question. Second one. Who plays Clark, Leslie Mann's husband, in Funny People? So he's got one more JT rule. Should he want to use yes. it? Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. Last one. 15 more seconds. Who plays Clark, Leslie Mann's husband, in Funny People? Jason, Jason Mansukis. And your winner, by way of technical knockout, the outlaw, John Roca. Eric, Eric Bana. Eric Bana. Eric Bana. Eric was the Bana. Answer. But this is different. Even though you look at the stats, you see KO for the last Eric Bana. Yeah. T you see T T T KO That's what this stat sheet is going to say. Not There's a fair. lot more in this match. No, Oyama played very good in this match. Yeah. This is not something Oyama needs to feel bad about at all because this was a match he played very, very well in. It was that steal, Mark. It was that big YA North guy, that Carolina Steel that got, the South Carolina Steel that got Roka that win. And that's the kind of magic, like you had brought up before, that's the kind of Roka that we're used to seeing. Yeah. When you say this is a iconic John Roka oh, performance yeah. that we just witnessed. Oh, yeah. John Roka, this is, I, and I can tell you, John's, John is a close friend. I've been talking to John a lot about this. Does he get a new documentary based off this win? No, but what I will tell you that he does, too, this is the most fired up and passionate about the league I've seen from John in since. Is two, that the case? I think so. I think John wow. said it as, uh, as much. Like, he was, John was a step away from stepping away from the game. Yeah. He's the team's champion now. He's on a good run with singles. You know he's staring down the barrel of an Ethan Irwin match. Uh, so this is going to be something that is very, very interesting to see. This is a TK over a former champion, you know he's feeling good about it, and the Finstock exchange is just on fire. They're doing well. They really are. They he's really got are. good horses in his stable. They really are. So, I, I mean, again, as they set up here, you look at, you, you, you got to feel good if you're Finstock, obviously. But Roca, though, Roca is, I mean, this is this is the John Roca that is, he just revitalized. It is a revitalized John Roca. Yeah. And now we're going to toss it over to Jen Sturge, who has an interview with John Roca and his faction mates, the Finstock Exchange. Thanks, Mark. Still an awful lot of gold back here. And Finstock, I just am wondering whether or not the Finstock, 
don't don't make that stupid face. I can't smile. I can't keep smiling. I know my face. you can't stop smiling, but I it's borderline creepy at this point. But Good. can the Finstock exchange be stopped? Clearly not. It's like the wind. It just keeps blowing. Anyway, look. Watching John play today, this was vintage John Roca. I mean, pulling answers out of his ass, just understanding the game. I told him he was the three C's today, cool, calm, and collective. Um, this is the guy that everybody has known, you know, to, to come and love. So basically, uh, look, he, did, he came out here, and Paul's a great, a great competitor. There's no question about that. And his new, you know, whatever faction and whatever he's got going on with himself is pretty cool too. But, I mean, nowhere near what we're doing here, obviously. Uh, too much gold. But anyway, John came here, got us three points for the, uh, you know, the faction, and, uh, you know, we love it. It's absolutely right. Uh, being able to TKO a former champ, yeah. that does seem like vintage John Roca. Yeah. And, and, and boss isn't wrong. You were so close to stepping away from this game. Are you glad you stuck around? I kind of am, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, I was texting with somebody the other day, and they were like, you got your third or fourth wave of, of staying in this game. And, you know, like anything else, and like I say all the time, you never know what can happen if you stick it out. If you just keep fighting, things might open up for you, and you never know. I was very nervous going into this match. I had unorthodox studying techniques for Oyama because you don't know what the kid knows, what he doesn't know. How do you know so much about classics, but you're kind of division on 80s? All of this stuff was dancing around in my head, so it all had to be the luck of the draw and how the wheel came out. Getting that perfect round really helped, but pulling South Carolina, Tom's right, pulled that right straight out of my butt, uh, and uh, was very lucky with that, but those Matt and Ben questions were not easy, um, but Paul's a great competitor, certainly had me on my toes and focused to play him. Um, and I'm here to stay. I'm here to play and I'm here to win belts. That's what I do and defend belts. I love the new season. I love the new factions. I love the challenges. But what comes into play when things are tight is having an experienced manager, having an incredible team behind you who knows how to get you focused in. And so when those has-beens are never gonna be start chanting round four Roca, they have to eat crow at my win. And I love it. And I love it. Nothing motivates me more. Nothing dials me in than people doubting me or making fun of me. You all know what that feels like, so you understand. And all I do is win matches and win belts and win titles. And you have to set an example because all these gentlemen are stepping up, so I gotta step up as well. It may be a new era, but it's old John Roca and in the best way possible. Thank you, Jen. It's always great to see you after a win. I gotta tell you. <laughs> you're much you're much happier and much better to deal with yeah. after a win. I mean, you always pull out a great promo, but for the love of God, you're so much happier when you when you win. Now guys, you are gonna be facing Irwin. Yes. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I tell you, that match has stuck in my craw for such a long time because I didn't show up mentally for that match. I'm a different player now. This faction has really kind of got me in the right place, the right for mindset. Of course, my lady outlaw does the business 24 hours a day at the house when these guys aren't around. She handles it there and she gets me focused. You know what she said to me? I didn't take a shower and put on makeup to see you lose, so you win this damn match. And that's my lady. You see what I'm saying? You get driven from the house to the competition and back. That's how it works. Ethan Irwin, I respect the hell out of you, man. You know so much. You took care of my arch nemesis, Jeff Snyder. Much love to him, so much love to you. And I can't wait to take care of you one-on-one -on -one and show you what the real outlaw can do in a match. And let's see what you can do against that, Irwin. Let's do this one more time. You and me, brother man, one more time. Yeah. Woo! I gotta fan you off after that one. John Roca, and going into Free For All last year, the match before was John Roca versus Andrako, right? And now, so John Roca does the same thing he did last year. He's got a victory going into the free for all. It's got to feel good, but he is team's champion also. But you're right. It does feel different this year. There, yeah. there, there's a different energy. He's taking his ginkgo biloba. He's crushing the ginseng. Whatever he needs to have to keep his energy up, that's what he did. That's what you saw in that post-match interview. He is ready to take the next step, steps that he's taken before. Right. I think this is a reborn outlaw. Now you get to Paulo Oyama, Christian. Yeah. Where does he go from here? Well, I think Paulo Oyama, for sure, we saw what he's going to do with that team with Lon Harris. So it's certainly not the last we're going to see Formidable. him for this season at all. Plus, he, he this, like I said to you at the end of the match, 
This was a well-fought match by Oyama. Sure. I think if you look at the performance against Bateman, he knew he was out of out of sorts for that one. He was in the game. He just had it was that steal. It was that big steal in the YA category that set it apart because he was firing through those things. I'm very curious to how he's going to respond from it and what Winston's going to say. But Jen is standing with both Paul Oyama and Winston Marshall right now. Jen. Guys, I could think we can both agree that that was not a slouch performance at all by Oyama, and you still have to be feeling pretty good about that. Oh, I'm I'm super proud of my boy. Like he did an incredible job. Uh, I apologize to my mama. She was like just channeling in my spirit when we hit YA. I was out here talking about yes, Lord. I, I just went to the whole full Jehovah's Witness, just just on the ground, whatever. Uh, but. I, I'm just curious, how many damn people in the Finstock Exchange? They like the white Wu Tang Clan with no bars. Like, I just don't understand how so many of them cats come out of like I don't know. Hey, yeah, and I'm gonna get a belt too. And like, hey, yeah, I got a belt too. So, real talk, real talk. Um, I'm really proud of you, man. You did an incredible job today. And and I gotta give props up to Roka. Like, honestly, he pulled two out of nowhere. And that's why he's one of the goats, man. Like, honestly. So, I, I, this was a great match, and we're only going up from here. Paul, you know, you played from behind, obviously, at Spectacular, and that didn't work out in your favor. I feel like it prepared you, though, for this match and how you handled playing once John Roca went ahead of you in the first round. Do you feel like you were able to keep your cool having had that experience behind you? Yeah, I mean, I think that Spectacular is a really complicated story, um, the one that I don't have to necessarily get into. But I think that this match was, I think, more the real me. Um, and for me, it's it's all about just staying in the game, you know, as you see in other matches, like crazy swings can happen, like at the drop of a hat. So it's like, you never really know what to expect. You got to just stay in there and, and answer what you know. Um, I do regret not using a repeat on the last round one question. I, I sort of realized my mistake as, as soon as it ended. But, you know, it's one of those things. There's always a room for improvement. And uh, hopefully the next match will be a little better than this one. Were you shocked? Yeah, give it up for Paulo Yama, guys. Were you shocked that he was able to get that steal in YA? Yeah. I mean, uh, just it sucks. I, I, I know that movie. I actually like that movie quite a bit. There's a bunch of people with French names. Uh, they're all Cajun. And I was like, well, it's probably Louisiana. And Roca just, you know, threw an answer at the wall and I, it stuck. And uh, sometimes that just happens. Um, maybe I should have won multiple choice. That changes a lot of the, the calibration of the game, I think. But ultimately, you know, it's just I went out there and I answered the stuff that I knew. And he just ha happened to answer the stuff that he knew better than, than me. And, you know, his, his, his answering was, you know, it was, it was the old Roka again, so it's a, it's tough, but you know you, you learn from it and you grow from it. Absolutely, and it feels like you've learned a lot just in, the, in this match alone and, like I said, from Spectacular. And I'm sure moving forward this season, you're going to take those lessons and we may see you with the belt down the line. I certainly hope so. Uh, I, I'd like to see all the work that I put in sort of get rewarded in that way. And um, again, I approach every match very seriously. Obviously, Roka is an incredible opponent. Um, but the next person, I'm just going to be even hungrier, I think. Like, my last three performances, while necessarily not all of them awful, I don't think that I, I've played to my potential. And I think that um, the team's match is more of, more indicative of the kind of player that I am. And I think that the next match, I'll hope to show it, and we'll see. Real talk. That's, that's why I have all the faith in the world in this kid, because you see that he, you know, you, it's a tough match to lose. And he takes it on the chin, and he's ready to keep going. I like exactly what you did with final exam. I'm excited, dude. You've got this. This is your season, baby. So let's go get him, all right? A brand new Paul Oyama, guys. I like this version. I like him. Back to you. All right. So we do too, Jen. I mean, look, he, he, he knew it. He acknowledged it. And that's the thing. He, he, the, the problem is when you start 6-0, you know, this there's the only one way to go. Yeah, and there's so many <laughs> players in this league, and so many and people older than him that have this vast knowledge that you're gonna have your bumps. But it's that answer that he said that you got to learn, you got to move, and you got to try to do, you know, you got to try to use that knowledge for your next opponent. And I think that's what he's gonna do. And will he show up in the free for all tomorrow? I don't know. I mean, it's possible. Um, and if he does, maybe he finds himself with a with a higher number, and he gets a chance to win the whole thing and get himself a title shot. There's always, there's a lot of different um, possibilities. Yeah, we're doing those what if. Man matches, you know? I, right. I kind of want to see a what-if match where we give uh, Roka the YA category, because I want to see if Roka is pulling the Sir Sharona right. and the host or right. the fifth wave, that kind of thing. Yeah. But hey, that's why they call it the wheel round. That's why it's fun. You get into round number three, it wasn't Paul's day, but you're right. I think that the TKO does not accurately reflect how well he competed against John Roka. No, but what it does do is it gives the Finstock Exchange three big points and puts them back on the leaderboard. Here is the leaderboard as it stands today. You can see that leaderboard 
leaderboard anytime you want. If you go to the SchmodownLive.com, Frankie Numbers has put the stats tab there. Go to the SchmodownLive.com. You can get tickets to that website. You can too, absolutely you know. do that. Yeah. If you're going to be in Los Angeles or anywhere close, get tickets because they're almost gone. The SchmodownLive.com for the free for all. That's right. Tomorrow, downtown Los Angeles, 1 p.m., 40 competitors playing for a chance to win a title. Like Dan Merle said, he cashed in. He is now the team's champion. 40 competitors will have an opportunity to do just that. That's right. And tonight, big stand-up show headlined by me. You can get tickets at markellislive.net. Will Christian Harloff be a special guest? No. Here. Probably not. All right. See you soon. But maybe. <laughs> hey, Paul. Oh, hey. I just to say, I meant what I said out there, you know? I was really hard on you last season, and I just, I don't know, you look like you're playing different. I can tell that you've changed and you've taken this to heart. Just wanted to wish you good luck. Oh, that, that especially coming from you, that, that does really mean a lot. Thank you. Kill it this season, man.